determine the reactions at the supports. So with this beam, the main forces will be acting from this distributed load right here. The distributed loads look really scary, but it's really just saying that there is an infinite amount of force vectors acting along this beam right here, and they're defined from this function right here. And if you multiply, you see the function here is given in newtons per meter. So if you multiply uh, the distance that this distributed load is acting on, you'll simply get the force acting in this direction. Or you can also think of it as finding the area under this distributed load right here. As you can see, the height at this top point will be 400 newtons per meter. And we know that's acting from A to B, which would be 6 meters total. We can find an area there and a total force. So we'll dive into that a little more with uh, the free body diagram and equations of equilibrium. But let's start with our fine variables, as always. See what we're actually looking for. We're trying to find the reactions at the supports. So at point A, we have a rocker, which will uh, create a reaction that is normal to the reaction surface right there. So it's going to call that normal force at A or NA. And we know the pin at B will be, will be uh, resisting forces in the x and y directions. So we can split that into B, Y, and B, X. Uh, it's important to note that pins do not resist any moments per se. So uh, the beam is free to rotate around uh, the reaction at B. So let's draw a free body diagram. And we'll be assuming for this problem that this is a weightless, massless beam. It's a rigid beam, so I want to form. Uh, and it's also a weightless beam as well. So let's use the labeling system given the problem. No reason to create a new one. So you have point A, point B, and this beam is going to be 6 meters total. Three meters, and define it and split into two three meter sections. Okay, so the reaction at A right here would be some vector about at that angle. And to find that specific angle that's acting, we can find, we can say, we can look at this triangle right here, I should say. And it's important to note that this triangle is given. Uh, it gives uh, the angle of the reaction surface, not the reaction vector. So we can explore that a little. If we write, copy down that 3, 4, 5 triangle, uh, we, if we add another triangle to it, another 3, 4, 5 triangle, the hypotenuse in the middle being 5, these are both equal triangles and it creates a rectangle. And with this horizontal right here, it creates a 90 degree angle as we know. And let's say we rotate that second triangle right there. If we rotate that 90 degrees, we'll get something like this. Here's the original three, four, five triangle. And then we have that rotated triangle, rotated 90 degrees, which would again be that three, four, five triangle, but just different side lengths here. Because we rotated that 90 degrees, that'll create a 90 degree angle between the two hypotenuses, which is really convenient to, uh, for us because we know that the reaction at A is also perpendicular to that first hypotenuse, which will also be, by definition, parallel to that second triangle. So now we have that triangle in terms of the reaction force. And we just copy that down right here on our free body line, three, four, five. And we have the normal reaction at A. Okay. Let's clear up some space real quick. Okay. Going left to right, as always, stay organized. We have this huge distributed load right here. A bunch of forces, an infinite amount of forces acting on this beam. And we know this top portion right here, 
will be 400 newtons per meter. And if we added up all these forces for into one resultant force, which we'll do to as an assumption here to to to, to use in our equation of equilibrium, to find that resultant force will act in the average part of the force. So for triangles it's usually a third in from the the right angle but because we have two triangles right here we know it's going to be located in the middle right here because it's symmetric basically symmetric along this axis right here so we know the average force should be in the middle right here and we're just going to denote that with the centroid symbol right here in the middle it's a fancy symbol just to say that's this is where the resultant vector will be in the force okay now looking at b we know we have the reaction By and reaction Bx. Okay. Let's get our full free body diagram done right here. Let's go to equations of equilibrium. Okay. Let's start by summing the moments. Sum the moments about point A. And set that equal to zero because it beams at rest. Uh, no force at A will be creating a moment about A. There's no moment arm. And so going left to right, we see that this strip be loaded, the next force creating a moment. So to find the total force acting here, we need to find the area in this distributed load. We know the area for a triangle is one half base times height. We know the base right here is going to be six meters. And we know the height is going to be 400 newton meters. No, 400 newtons per meter. Which will just create force right there. And to find the moment arm, we have to look at the reactant, uh, resultant force, which will be located right here in the middle. And it would be 3 meters from point A. And this is going to be a negative moment using the right-hand rule. And the only other moment we have about A is going to be BY positive using the right hand rule it's acting at six meters away from point a so the equal to zero we have un one unknown un unknown right here by so we can find by plug that into your calculator by should be 600 newtons and that'll be our first unknown okay and even though traditionally uh, three equations you use for equilibrium are uh, sum of forces in the y, x, and moments about some point. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can sum the moments about two different points to find your unknowns. So instead of doing sum of the forces in the x or the y, we need sum of moments about point B to find this reactionary force at A. So if we sum the moments about B, going from left to right, from B, we have the reaction at A. We know only the vertical component will be, cre will be creating a moment. So now the vertical component will be 4 over 5. And the moment arm is going to be 6 meters. And that's going to be a negative moment by the right-hand rule. Okay, and then we have that big distributed load. Again, find the force. It's going to be one half base times height. So you have one half, 400 newton, newtons per meter, acting over six meters. That's going to be the total force right there, and that's going to be, again, three meters right there. So it's the same thing we're doing up here as right down here, but it's instead going to be a positive moment because you're, you're flipping the the point you're taking the moments about. Give me a positive moment. Set that equal to zero. None of these forces here at B are going to be creating a moment about B. That leaves us with one unknown right here, the normal reaction at A. And if you plug that all into your calculator, you should find that NA 
is equal to 750 newtons. And that will be our second unknown. 750 newtons. So then, that simply leaves us with finding Bx. So, we can now sum the forces in x, set equal to zero. Again, going left to right, we know, let me verify to find the horizontal component, component of Na, and it's going to be 750 newtons. The distributed load is not acting in the horizontal, so we can forget about that for the, for the x components, and then we have Bx going in the negative direction right here. Set that equal to zero, and you should find Bx is equal to 450 newtons. Okay. And we put that up here in our unknowns, 450 newtons. So we found all of our three unknowns. Uh, we answered what the question was asking for, and that's it.